Hi guys, in this video I'm going to attempt to simplify these four different fractions. When we are dealing with thirds in fractions, the first thing we're probably going to have to do uh, to simplify them is leave each fraction with a rational denominator. Now what that means is we have to perform operations on each of these fractions which will move or replace the third in the base with a whole number. So this, uh, we're going to be using a, a few s different third laws, which I will identify as I'm using them in each of the cases. Um, but if you uh, are aware of certain index laws, um, these won't come as much of a surprise. They're quite intuitive. So basically, one of the biggest things about rationalizing any uh, fraction with a third in the base is where we normally times it by a version of 1. Now, I'll explain what that means now in attempting to do the first one. So, 2 square root 6 over 3. What we're going to do to start with is we are going to multiply the square root 6 over 3, square root 3, We're going to be multiplying this by 1, but we're going to write 1 like this. The square root of 3 divided by the square root of 3. Now, this is a very clever mathematical operation because we're essentially multiplying something by 1. But this type of 1, if when we multiply it, is going to change the base to a rational number. So what we can do here is when we multiply we're going to get square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is just 3. So we're going to end up with 3 in the base. And that comes from the third law. If we have the square root of a multiplied by the square root of a, that just equals a. So what we have now is we've got 2 square root 6 times square root 3, and that's going to give us 2 square root of 18. And that is the index law if we have the square root of a times the square root of b. That's equal to the square root of a, b. So if you've got two square roots timesing by each other, you can just multiply the numbers under the square root sign and have it as a square root of the, the final number. So that's what I've done here. 6 times 3 is 18, and I've made it the square root of 18. Okay, so we can further simplify this. Now I've got a, we've rationalized it, but we can further simplify this by basically taking this 18, square root of 18, backwards using this third law here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to rewrite 18 as the product of two numbers. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go, well, this is going to be equal to 2 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. So essentially, I've just gone backwards with this law here. And that is still all over 3. So this, we can compute the square root of 9 because we know that that is 3. So this is going to be 2 times 3, which is equal to 6, square root 2, all divided by 3. And I can now simplify the co coefficients. So 6 over 3 is the same as 2 over 1. So I can just write this finally as 2, square root 2. So that's the first one done. Cool. So let's change color and go to the second one. Okay. So again, we're going to try and rationalize this, but this is a l involves a little bit of rearranging before we can start doing anything. The first thing that we are going to have to know is that there's a third law, the square root of a over b is equal to the square root of a over the square root of b. So 
The square root of 7 over 18 is going to be the square root of 7 over the square root of 18. So I'm going to rewrite it using that. Square root of 7 divided by the square root of 18. Cool. Now what I can do is I'm going to use, again, that index law going backwards that I used up here with the square root of 18. I'm going to rewrite 18 at the bottom as being equal to the square root of 7 over the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. So that's going to be equal to the square root of 7 divided by square root of 9 we know is 3 square root 2. Cool. Now we've got to go about rationalizing it. Now to rationalize this, we're going to use this, do the same operation that we did in the first problem where we're going to multiply it by a version of 1. Now in this case, the version of 1 is going to be two, root 2 over root 2. And that is going to give us root 7 times root 2 is the square root of 14 divided by 3 times square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2 times by 3 is 6. And that is our final answer there. Okay. So, the problems get a little bit trickier, but it's not too bad. So, what we're going to do in this case, in this one, we're going to just, we can start by just uh, multiplying this by our version of 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to have 5 minus 8 square root 2 divided by the square root of 3. And we're going to times that by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. Cool. So we know that the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is equal to 3. So let's just put it big long line. And the way we're going to solve the top is we're going to have the square root of 3 in a, outside of a bracket and then we're going to have 5 minus 8 square root 2. Cool. So from here we're going to be using the distributive law. So by that I mean we're going to go far, square root 3 times 5 and square root 3 times 8 root 2 all over 3. So, square root 3 times 5 is equal to 5 times the square root of 3 minus the square root of 3 times the square root of 8 root 2 is 8 root 6. And that is all over 3. So, that one there is now complete. We've rationalized it. We can't factorize the top at all. So, that's where we're going to leave that one. Now, finally, we come to this last one, which has a subtraction in the denominator. So, I'm going to change color again. Now, in the denominator here, this is going to... If we didn't know what to do here, this would cause us quite a bit of trouble trying to rationalize this denominator. But what we're going to use is we're going to use a quadratic expression called the difference of perfect squares, which will help us rationalize the denominator here. Now, just to refresh your memories, a dif the difference of perfect squares is if we have a minus b times a plus b, this is equal to a squared minus b squared. So hopefully your introductory algebra has taught you how this works, and I'm going to show you how to apply this to rationalizing a third, which looks like this. So to start with, we'll rewrite the prop, we'll rewrite the question. So we've got 2 square root 3 over 3 minus the square root of 5. Now, 
we're going to have to multiply this by a version of 1. Now, using this, if I have a 3 minus square root 5, if I'm going to be using the difference of perfect squares rule, I'm going to have to multiply this by 3 plus the square root of 5. And I'm going to have to put that on the top too. So now, 3 plus the square root of 5 over 3 plus the square root of 5, this is still equal to 1. So it's, it's doing... It's not making any difference to the actual value of this fraction. It's just going to make a difference to how the fraction looks to us and whether it's rational or not. So, what can we do? Well, looking at the difference of perfect squares rule, if I have a minus b times a plus b, which is what I have here, I've got this times this, I get a squared, which in this case is 3 squared, so that's going to be 9, or I'm just going to write 3 squared at the moment, minus b squared. So b squared is the square root of 5 squared. Cool. And then on the top we have 2 square root 3 outside of a bracket and then we have 3 plus square root 5 inside the bracket. Cool. Now what is this going to equal? Well, let's have a look. On the denominator, we have 3 squared, which is 9, minus square root of 5 squared, which is 5. So the denominator is 9 minus 5, which is just 4. That looks fairly rational to me, which is good. Good start. Now, we have to use the distributive law again with these brackets. So we're going to go that times that, and then that times that. So what we have is we've got 2 square root 3 times 3 is going to be 6 square root 3 plus 2 square root 3 plus times square root of 5 is going to be 2 square root 15. Cool. So, we're not done yet because we can factorise the numerator and by 2. So, we can have 2 outside of 3 square root 3 plus the square root of 15. All divided by 4. Then what we can do is we can simplify the coefficients here. So that's going to cancel out and give us a 1. That's going to cancel out and give us a 2. And then we're going to be left with 3 square root 3 plus the square root of 15 all divided by 2. So this last one is a little bit more tricky, but if you understand that you can use the difference of perfect squares rule, which we usually apply to quadratic functions, if you apply that to the denominator here, when you are multiplying your function by 1, you'll find that you, in every case of these style of ones, you will end up getting rid of the third in the base. So I hope that video was helpful. If you have any questions regarding thirds, just send us a send us a line, and um, I'll have you all. I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks.